In this video, I'm going to use Blender to create a very simple object which I can use to test print on the Artillery Sidewinder X1. Now, um, whilst I want to kind of get to grips with really sophisticated models, I really want to start with the basics first and just get an understanding of shapes and how to print and how to create the necessary files to print. I've already printed the test cube and that came out well. So what I'm trying to do essentially is create another shape. So rather than a cube, I'm going to go with a cone. Now, a cone is a very simple shape, but also I think it will be quite a challenging shape because not only have you got a wide base, but then it also graduates up towards the top to a point. And I think it would be really interesting to see how the, the artillery Sidewinder X1 copes with that shape and what the result is going to be. So, um, essentially I'm going to, I've, I've loaded up Blender as you'll see and I've got my default cube so I press middle mouse button and then move around and I can actually move the shape in, um, in a 3D world but I don't want the, the square or cube, I want a cone so I click it and then press delete and that deletes it. So then I go, whilst I'm in layout and object mode I click on add, mesh and then cone and that creates a cone. Brilliant. So in very simple terms, that's my shape. Now one of the things that I was struggling to get my head around is scale because I had no concept of how large this cone is in, in real time or real size. And basically, although I did a bit of research, I couldn't really find out. As far as I'm a, as far as I can find out, the M units that Blender uses are Blender units. And I'm not, I don't, I haven't had a way of, or I haven't found a way of being able to identify how big a Blender unit is in the real world. So what I did is I kind of um, looked at this the other way. So I basically came up with a, a size and then loaded it into Repetier, the software, the slicer software that comes with the artillery. And then I compared it to the cube. So initially I was too small, then I was too big. So what I found was that 15 of whatever units these are, blender units, equates to a pretty much the, the same base size as the, the test cube. So if we put 15, so obviously that's the, the x-axis, so it's distorted it. 15, that's the y-axis, and then the z-axis, 15. And then what we need to do is zoom out, but there we can see our cone. And that seems to be, um, in terms of size, very similar to the test cube. So essentially, that's our cone. So what I, what I need to do now is basically um, file, save. So I save that as a cone, and then also export it, and I'm going to export it as an STL file. Now, done that already. So what I go then, what I do then is I load Repetier. So um, it comes with um, a host and a server. Um, so I installed everything. Um, I'm not sure if I need everything at this stage, but at least I've got it if I need it. You can actually connect to the machine, presumably if it's connected by USB, which mine isn't at the moment. And as you can see, I've loaded up the cone and I've loaded up the cube here. And um, just for comparison side by side. So it's a very similar base size. And this is where I, I looked at these um, squares here and if this is 15 um, blender units then actually each one of these is 5 so hopefully that will help in the future um, when I'm looking at the build size of objects and the fact that each one of these squares is 5 so I'll get an idea of how big it's going to be I'm, I'm sure there'll be a bit an easier way of identifying that in the future but I'll, I'll keep searching and when I find it I'll let you know or if anyone knows let me know thank you um, okay, so essentially what we need to do now is I'm going to get rid of my um, cube um, from this. And one of the other things I was doing is I was checking the settings. So if we go into the slicer, I can see that I've got the same settings as the cube had. Um, or, or even if I've loaded the cube. So, so maybe the cube already has the settings within it, but either way, 
Um, these are the, seem to be the default. So the infill pattern is a honeycomb. Solid infill pattern is rectilinear. So I'm going to keep all these. Um, enable cooling. So I'm going to keep all these settings as they are and I'm going to slice with slicer. And then what that does is it creates my G-code file. And, um, and this tells me that it's going to take 16 minutes, um, 145 layers, 17,786 lines and um, 631 millimeters of um, filament to be used. So with this file saved, let's see how it prints.